Michael, you're very welcome. Thank you, JM Creates. Very nice to be here. No bother at all. Uh, it's all. It's always a pleasure to have you on the show. Um, okay, Mike, we're gonna we're we're, we're just going to be speaking a bit about um, you know a, a little bit about what the the animal does, Mike the animal Moylan, what he does away from uh, from the drum kit. Um, so first of all, um, I, I know you're a, you're a keen gardener, and uh, you did a, a stint over in uh, the USA there, and um, that was uh, last year. It was. Um, part of the Ohio State University International in- Interim Program. Can you tell us first, how did you hear about this program that was run by uh, the Ohio State University? Absolutely. Um, I'm actually uh, a WIT student. Um, I study horticulture and I spend half the week in WIT, Waterford Institute of Technology. I spend the second half in Kildalton in Pilltown, County Kilkenny at the Chagask Agricultural College and they have a relationship which has been developed over a number of years but they have a relationship with Ohio State University which runs an international intern program and they recruit Irish students especially for agriculture and horticulture from colleges throughout the country throughout Europe actually but uh, the head of the International Intern Programme is currently an Irishman called Michael O'Keefe from County Cork and he went over as an intern in 86 and he's now head of the programme. So he comes back to Ireland a couple of times a year actually and he gives talks to students considering international work placements as part of their degrees. So when he gave a talk I went back as a mature student in September of 2009 and he gave a talk at the time in the fall, yeah, around November time, he was at the uh, the agricultural college, and he pretty much convinced me through his own experience um, when he gave his talk to say that anybody can go to America to enjoy a three month or six month or even a twelve month experience on a J one student visa, which is organised by the Ohio State University International Intern Program. So 12 months later, I, I applied through their online application system and I was accepted onto the program. And then I had to wait for them to organize a placement for me. And I waited for a good three months and eventually in February of 2011, I got a phone call from one of Mike's staff who was looking after my, my resume and my, my application. So I got a couple of different offers, but the one I really liked was uh, at the Holden Arboretum, which is the second largest arboretum in America. It's in Ohio State. Um, so I just flew to Columbus in Ohio and I had my um, orientation day there and then I got dropped to the Holden Arboretum by one of OSU's intern program staff. They drove us up there. We, we, we met the, the new host, which was the Holden Arboretum. And yeah, I did a 12 month placement over there thanks to uh, Ohio State University. Okay, and uh, when did you first hear about uh, the Holden um, uh, the Holden Center? The Holden Arboretum in Ohio was not on my radar at all. I was, Mike had suggested a few places that I might end up. The way the intern program works is you get to select three preferred uh, career choices, I suppose you could call them. In my case, coming from a, a landscape gardening background, I had uh, worked previously at Mount Kong of Gardens here in Waterford County, Blarney Castle Gardens in County Cork, and some other places in between. Um, but Mike suggested to me on, on my experience that I could probably end up somewhere like uh, Old Westbury Gardens in New York City, or planting fields arboretum in Long Island. So the Holden Arboretum, I'd never heard of it. Um, I didn't even hear of the Arnold Arboretum, which is the really famous one in Boston. It's smaller than Holden, but it has a, a better collection. Um, so yeah, I, I didn't know much about the Holden Arboretum until I was informed that they wanted to interview me. They liked my resume, my CV. And I, of course, went online and I researched their website. And initially they were offering me a six month seasonal gardener position 
which was fine. I would have went in April and came back in September and went back into year three of my degree. But I figured if I'm going to go as far as America, I'd like to go for 12 months to enjoy the, the four seasons because they do, they do have great seasons, great fall color in Ohio. So I noticed on Holden Arboretum's website, they actually had a 12 month internship coming up in um, plant records. So I researched it and I, I got my questions for them and I had my interview and I, I let them know that I was interested in coming to Ohio for the year and I'd like to take up the plant records position. So thankfully and luckily for me, they, they offered it to me and thanks to OSU, I ended up going to Ohio for a year and had a great, great life experience. Okay. And like, um, and what were the day-to-day the -day tasks that uh, you would have been carrying out in, in the Holden Arboretum? Well, plant records is kind of, uh, it's different from being a gardener. I, I didn't have any hands-on gardening work. So it, the whole idea of interning in the States is to go into a field of, or an aspect of horticulture that you haven't really experienced in. So that's why I didn't go as a seasonal gardener. Um, I, I wanted to try something different and you know further my career and improve my resume so plant records is a very big deal for an arboretum um, an arboretum is a tree museum a living tree museum and when you're working at the second largest tree museum in, in America you're looking at 3600 acres and they're still finding large trees on the property uh, when I was there in May of 2011, we got a call from the conservation crew to say that they had found a large tulip tree, which is a Liriodendron tulipifera, on the property, somewhere in the natural areas. So we were given a map, uh, myself and my, my boss, Ethan Johnson, who was plant records curator. Uh, we just got in our truck and we drove out to this area. Uh, we crossed a couple of streams and we hiked into the woods and we found this tulip tree and we got out our equipment um, we used a uh, 25 foot measuring pole, fiberglass pole, extendable. And we would use that to measure the heights of trees, provided there were a certain height. And if anything over, f say, 33 feet, we would have to use a hypsometer, which uses triangulation geometry. So um, we measured this massive tulip tree in the natural areas at the Holden Arboretum, and it was 145 feet tall at an approximation because we would have to allow for human error without measuring the tree with a tape. So we would be on the conservative side and we would say 145. And the crown width was 75 feet and the diameter at breast height, which is the way you measure the, the diameter and the girth of the tree. In this case, the di diameter at breast height was 59 inches, so quite a specimen. And that was really cool because to, to date, it's still the largest tree measured on the property, so I was kind of looking to, to be involved in that. But uh, generally in plant records, we work with phenophases, where we look at the, the plants, not just trees, but also herbaceous plants and shrubs. And when they come into bloom, we would take pictures, we record the dates, the data will be taken down on, on sheets with pencil, and then we would go back to the office in the afternoon and we would enter that data onto a thing called BG Base or Botanical Garden Base, which is an internationally shared database. Um, currently, I believe over 120 arboreta worldwide, the majority in the States, a good few in Australia and also in Europe. But there's over 120 arboreta share the information with each other. Uh, and I think it's, it's in 35 countries at the moment, it's, it's in use. So it's it's very interesting to see how detailed they go into the history of the plants and where it was wild collected and who collected it and who named it and so on. So all this information had to be entered by myself, the intern, and Ethan would take care of um, the mapping duties. But we would also go out into the field with a GPS interface and we would locate the plants, new plants that were planted in the arboretum or plants that were removed or dead. So all that stuff would have to be recorded. And I think the electronic records at the Holden Arboretum started in the 1980s, the early 80s, but the paper records go back to the 60s. So it's there's a lot of detail, a lot of 
lot of data that goes into a, a large arboretum like that. Okay, and um, how did you get on with the uh, with the staff uh, when you were working over there? Because you were, you, you know, you were new to the scene. You know, um, I, I'm assuming that it was your well, your first time living in America. You know, so uh, you know, was it grand? Did, did you get on okay? Yeah, absolutely. It was a great experience. Uh, it was a big step for me. I was a mature student in the middle of a degree, so to go to Ohio State was an adventure. And as soon as I got there. I paired up with another intern from Poland and a girl from Switzerland. The three of us shared a house with three American interns. So there were six of us, all students, interning at the Arboretum. And I mean, the staff at the Arboretum, although it's a big place, it's 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 kind of a family, really. It's a, it's like a big extended family, and they were very welcoming, very accommodating. They gave us lots of field trips, and we also had, in my own instance, I had full benefits because I was a full-time employee as an intern and um, that allowed me to have extra time off to you know to travel and to do stuff. There was lots to do in Cleveland which was the nearest place. Um, Cleveland is on the shore of Lake Erie and so lots to, to see and do there um, but the people in general in Holden and in America from my experience are very friendly people and you know, I wouldn't have any reservations in going back over. And uh, you mentioned there that um, you know you uh, you got to travel uh, while you were uh, uh, working in the Holden Ar- Arboretum. Did you get much of an opportunity to do that? You know, to, to see the great outdoors. Yeah, absolutely. I, I arrived there in April 2011, and we took our first road trip in May. Three of us, three international interns, we took all, all from Europe. Actually, we rented a car and we drove to Chicago and uh, we did see the sights in Chicago. We went to the top of the Sears Tower which is the tallest building in the Northern Hemisphere and we just had a great time checking out the sights over a weekend and we drive back and go to work on Monday so it's very affordable to travel in America. Fuel is very cheap, they pay about 50% of what we pay. Um, So yeah we would just rent a car occasionally so we, we actually flew to new york city for the july 4 fireworks and that was cool we've seen a lot of scenery there a lot of sites empire state building and people's park and so on or central park actually and would you uh, would, uh for for anybody out there now uh, who'd be thinking of uh, of taking part in uh, in ohio state's international intern program uh, wh- what advice would you give to them i would say if you're considering going I mean, you can actually just organize yourself to go on a J-1 visa, but I think the best way to go is to go through Ohio Ohio State University because they do most of the paperwork for you. All you've got to do is fill out your online application. Then that can be a bit tricky, but you know, you'll get through it. And once you get through that and you get accepted onto the program, it's basically out of your hands then. Um, They take care of all the paperwork, the visas, the CVS fees program fees Um, you know you don't really need to to concern yourself with it once you're accepted onto the program and one of their staff is assigned you and they take care of stuff for you there's a lot of communication via phone skype email and they try and find you the best place for you in your list of preferences i mean i selected arborita as my number one choice then i said if they can't find me in arborita i'll go for a botanical garden and if they can't find me a botanical garden I'll go for a landscape construction but they found me my first choice and it's 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 really professionally run um, they also organize field trips with OSU and you get to go to trade fairs meet prospective employers and so on and Ohio State will give you a certificate at the end so I know I have a certificate from Ohio State University now for 12 months on the job training which is great. Well, from the from the sounds of it, I'd say uh, if you had a chance to do it all again in the morning, you would, yeah? Absolutely. Um, currently, actually, I'm going through the process again to go back over. My degree is finished in May, so I'm actually going back to do another J-1 visa with OSU. So I'm going to go to a, a small, much smaller arboretum this time, seven acres, uh, called Tizer. Arboretum and Botanical Garden, which is located in the Rocky Mountains in western Montana, God's country. 
or big sky country as it's known locally. It's 5,000 feet up. They grow a lot of rare plants. Um, family owned, family run, privately funded. Um, I've been communicating them with a couple of weeks and I'm really looking forward to going to see Montana. It's two and a half hours from Yellowstone National Park. It's two and a half hours from Glacier National Park. So that's going to be a, a dream placement. And again, thanks to Ohio State University. And congratulations on uh, on getting the job. That sounds like uh, quite a place uh, to be going in in the Rocky Mountains. Well, it's been good to see what uh, what, what Mike the Animal did uh, during his year off. But uh, we're going to get uh, back to the music. Thanks a million, Mike. Thank um, you. We uh, we wish you the best with the uh, with the J one and the new job. And we're going to.